So today we are fellowshipping with the, the family from Bridal Town Park Church here, and we want to be uh, expressing our we want to express our uh, gratitude and thanksgiving for everything that Bridal Town has done for us. I see here Dave James, and thank you, Dave, and uh, also thank you, Mike North, and uh, uh, I see Steve, and I, we also uh, fellowship with Dennis Billingham for a little bit, and we have a great understanding coming from you as a church and allowing us to come and uh, rent an office space here, and sometimes uh, we conduct Bible studies, which your church has provided space for us. Again, thank you. And may the Lord continue to bestow blessings upon you. And thank you for uh, the warm love from Anna and Adi. We uh, continuously pray for Matei and Emma and for Bridal Town Park Church and the success of the body of Christ here. We pray together with them, or at least with Adi, but Anna and Adi are one, so together. And we also pray individually for the family, and you are in our prayers and, and we worship God together in joy and love. With that being said, at least you know a little bit of who your tenants are as, uh, uh, you know, life goes on. Now, let us journey in the season and see what we want to do this morning is uh, awaken this reality that Advent is not a passive seasonal thing rather is an active uh, mode of life. Uh, and we, Corina, myself, Logos Church, Bridal Town Park Church, uh, the Cachula family, right? We set the tone of how bright we live this mode of life called Advent. We set the tone between uh, dark and, uh, and uh, light. It's a stark contrast but we are the ones in setting that tone. So now, what I like to do is journey with you in two Bible uh, texts, two Bible passages in particular, Luke chapter 1, verse 21, and then we will move into Romans, uh, the 13th chapter of Romans, and uh, read from verses 11 through 14. So Luke chapter 1, verse 21, and then Romans 14, verses 13, verses 11 through 14. So let us heed the reading of the word of God. And it says, and the people were waiting, and the people were waiting for Zechariah, and they were wondering at his delay in the temple. And then um, with... Um, uh, Verse 11 from chapter 13 of the book of Romans, we, we read, Besides this, you know the time that the hour has come for you to wake from sleep, for salvation is nearer to us now than we first believe. The night is far gone. The day is at hand. So then, let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and sensuality, not in quarreling and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Amen. Amen. And as we said earlier, this is what we want to do. We want to look into Advent, not as a seasonal uh, celebration or a passive seasonal celebration, rather as an active mode of life. And yes, we are lighting candles, and yes, we are celebrating this particular mode of life within a time frame. And, and today is the third Sunday of Advent and the Sunday of joy, yes. But we also don't lack joy or hope or peace or love throughout the year. We exhibit that, we refresh on, upon those, we are refreshed by those, and we take this into the world as ourselves living in this dark and gloomy society. We're not passive about this. We are fairly active, and this is 
where we want to start and look into how we come up, how we concluded this topic that Advent is not a seasonal passive state we go through, rather it is an active uh, lifestyle. And the first thing we want to do is look at what Advent is, really, and, and we have a few thoughts here, and one of them is what Advent is not. What Advent is not, and it's not this play we go, and you and I are probably accustomed to go um, to different plays around the Christmas season. Maybe have you ever gone out to visit or to watch uh, and be entertained by the Nutcracker? Um, by the way, who wrote the Nutcracker? Uh, Tchaikovsky or... Uh, yes, <laughs> I'm not a Russian expert, by the way, so please, <laughs> thank you, Steve, for that uh, introduction, but that's not me. <laughs> Anyways, um, yes, and we go to watch that play, or as a matter of fact, we, we like, me and Corina, we like to have this tradition of going and watch and hear and, and intake and be blessed by Handel's Messiah. And it's an amazing uh, cantata, right? It's an amazing concert, and it's refreshing. And it's seasonal. Uh, we, between November and uh, 25th of December, we try to accommodate our schedule to go and watch it. Unfortunately, this year, it did not happen. But Advent, by far, is not a play, or as a matter of fact, a liturgical play, leading us, as it were, uh, once again back on the path of things past and showing in us, once again in vivid picture, how it used to be way back then, in order for us to enjoy the present time of salvation all the more uh, joyful and blissfully. No, no. Advent is not a way to look back and contemplate how better we have it with running water, with electricity, with heat and comfort, and they did not have this. Rather, they had, uh, you know, rough life, agricultural-based economy with uh, rough life, and then we compare and we realize how blessed we are, and no, we don't do that. Advent is not meant for that. Advent is, Advent is not uh, meant to be a mere remembrance of a representation of something in the past. Oh, it happened. Uh, it happened way back then, about 2,000 years ago. Therefore, I remember it today uh, for the sake of remembering and then move on with life and personal life. Absolutely not. No. Then, what is Advent? Well, we propose that Advent is this... Um, present time with a present reality in which the church here and now does not indulge in play but refer us to something that represents the truth about the Christian existence as well and the Christian existence and the Christian reality and relevancy throughout the ages. So when we light that, kin uh, that uh, candle of hope of peace, of joy, of love. We know that this have endured throughout the generations, the ages, the eons, and has reached unto us. Uh, this coming of peace, hope, joy, and love are not just topics of a play and chapters of a uh, religious or, or uh, liturgical play to delight us. Rather, they are reality and very relevant for us. And there is a purpose behind this in Advent, and this purpose is to raise in us this particular awareness of the present time that we are living in. And of course, the, the question that arises is, how are we living these times? Do we live them full of Hope, peace, joy, and love? And let's be honest, probably not, or some people will say absolutely not. Yes, we know there is bitterness, there is sorrow, there is suffering, and I loved the report that uh, Anna brought about her experience last night. In all that experience of Emma being taken to the hospital and the hours spent there, God remained good, God remained love, God remained hope, God remained and still is Love and peace and joy. Praise God. And this is exactly what Advent is. 
an experience, an active mode of life, not a passive liturgical play or a mere remembrance of the things way back. Advent accordingly means then that uh, we get up and as we live life, we awake from the sleep and wait diligently and enthusiastic for something or rather said someone, for the King of Kings, for the Lord of Lords, for the Messiah. And this is what Advent is, this active mode of life in a state of waiting, anticipation of his coming and arrival with eternal, this time eternal, hope, peace, joy, and love. A short history of, uh, and, and very brief history of Advent will let us know that Advent, as we speak and presented it today before you, present the topic before you today, it is actually being lived like that. So there is suggestion that Advent has been observed since the fourth century and it was originally a time between the converts to Christianity once they experienced Christianity and decided that they want to follow the Christ and until they reached their baptism. It was that waiting time. So we have documents telling us uh, from the fourth century telling that this time of waiting of a new convert to experience Christ in the water of baptism was also called Advent and was particularly a time of high enthusiastic um, hopes. And, and we also find out that during the Middle Ages, and we classify those between the mid 400s, late 400s years until the 14th century, so the Middle Ages, um, Advent became associated with preparation for the second coming of Christ. So Advent was processed in the human minds as something that is needed to prepare ourselves for the second coming of Christ, not just the time of waiting between conversion and water baptism, rather the bridegroom is coming, rather the king of kings is coming, so we are getting prepared about this. And um, it was celebrated like that. Now, something happened about 50 years ago. I, myself, am not able to pinpoint what in particular happened. But of course, we live in a tumultuous um, generation and time frame with wars and rumors of wars, with new ideology popping up, with uh, new philosophies and bombarding us, right? So Advent shifted again to this anticipation of an, uh, um, more, or, or le more or less an emphasis on nativity. So many Christians still view Advent as a season to prepare for the uh, second coming of Jesus, but in the last 50 years, however, it, was, it has also come to be thought of a time of anticipation of the nativity, of the birth on Christmas Day. And uh, there is a um, sort of uh, downside to that. Once December 25th happens, then Advent slowly starts to uh, diminish and vanishes until uh, back in uh, end of November or December of the next year, when again we refresh our memories, which is a sad part. Because let's be honest, we are children of God waiting for his return. So we need to constantly be living Advent as an active mode of life. And we should be able to set the tone between how stark the contrast of darkness and light Advent exhibits in our own particular lives. So as we turn now to the biblical passages, we see a people gathered together, waiting outside the temple 
for Zechariah to come out and obviously offer the benediction, the blessing, exactly what we talk in Advent, the um, hope, peace, joy, and love that was bestowed upon the people through the prayer once the high priest will finish the incense, uh, the burning of incense in the temple. And as we look in, uh, as we look closer in verse 21 of chapter 1, we realize the people waiting, were waiting for Zechariah and they were wondering at his delay in the temple. Because I, 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 I tend to believe that sort of that human nature that we exhibit today with passivity towards holy things was also a passivity way back then, which characterizes humanity at the interventions of God. So very few of us really realize how precious God's interventions are. Rather, we want God to experience his peace and hope and joy and love and then move on with our own self-interests. And the people were now uh, uh, reaching a point of wondering, why, why is it taking so long? Can he just come out and uh, give us the blessing so we can move on? Uh, and, and it so happens that the course of history changed in that particular event. And it changed forever, for he came out mute. He came out without speaking any peace, any hope, any joy, any love towards the congregation gathered together outside to receive this. And it just happened that they were left in that wandering in the darkness. It says that, um, um, and when he came out, he was unable to speak to them and they realized that he had seen a vision in the temple and he kept making signs to them and remained mute. And with that, we see another verse. It says, when the time of service was ended, he went to his own home, suggesting that everyone else went to his home on that tone of soundlessness, muteness. But then we turn the pages, of course, of Luke, and we find out what happened and the good news and the great joy and obviously the kindled, uh, the, 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 the peace and hope and love were kindled forever, not just for that time frame. And then we come to this dialogue that Apostle Paul has with the Roman church and he puts out before them a provocation. Look, this is the Christian mode, the active mode of life. Live accordingly because Advent is an active mode of life and we or you in Rome, or us in Toronto here, we set the tone of how stark is the contrast between dark and light, right? So then there are five thoughts that I want to bring before us and then bring uh, our message to a conclusion and very briefly say that when Apostle Paul speaks about night, he does express clearly uh, through different terms, either revelries, drunkenness, lewdness, and quarrels, how dark the night is. He does speak, the second thought is, he does speak about the nocturnal orgy as an image of a world gone wrong. And he, in this picture, compels us to realize with dismay how accurately Apostle Paul is actually describing our own times. A world gone in darkness, a world gone out in gloomness and in, in, in the night. But then he provokes us to Advent and he provokes us to leave this awakened. And it says uh, here, uh, 
So then let us cast off works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the daytime, not, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and sensuality, not in quarreling and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Wake up! Wake up as we are called by the apostles uh, Paul to rise from sleep, which means to rise from conformity with such a world to rise from resembling the world of the night and resemble the calling of light, of daylight, yeah? And to live with uh, courageous virtues and courageous faith and to shake the dream that prevents us from recognizing our vocation and our highest potential. And then, of course, the songs of the soul will burst as we fellowship in this Advent mode of active mode of life, realizing that, yes, there is something more than what the night offers. There is something much more. Actually, there is something real than the dream of pleasures, of materialism, which are expressed now in the songs of the Advent, which we hear ever so often during these weeks. And they could perhaps become for us beacons of light that shows us the way and make us lift up our eyes and acknowledge promises so much greater than those based on money, power, and pleasure. So when we wake up from the night, when we wake up from the orgies of the night, we actually wake up from the comfort zone into a real song of peace, hope, joy, love that has endured throughout the generation and calls us the song and these songs, as we may say, these carols, they summon us over and over and over to leave Advent as an active mode of life according accordingly in, in this uh, active mode of life, living, exhibiting the light and diminishing the darkness, then to be awake for God and for our neighbor, for this is what Advent means, awaking. It means that in this time, they look at us, they look upon us, and we are the light which they see Christ in. So as we are summoned to leave Advent, and as our time has passed too, uh, and um, unfortunately maybe, maybe we get to fellowship uh, other times, but as we are on the uh, verge of, of closing the service this morning, and uh, rejoicing or continues, uh, continue to rejoice in this season of Advent, let us remember one more time that Advent, by far, it's not a passive remembering of the past in a liturgical play. Rather, it's an active mode of life in which we, each of us, we set the stark contrast between dark and light. So I challenge all of us, I challenge myself, my family, my wife, my children, live accordingly and allow me to read again those verses in Romans and then we'll close. Uh, besides this, you know the time that the hour has come for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than we, were first, than we first believed. The night is far gone, the day is at hand, so then let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and sensuality, not in quarreling and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Amen.